Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on October 19th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well, earthquakes, volcanoes, and a look at our world weather. Checking out here the last 48 hours of imagery on our sun, 304 angstroms filter. We do have that deep, large coronal hole in the southern hemisphere, and as well, two C-class solar flares to talk about in and outgoing position. So nothing has been thwarted our way today. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming, big bright cresting region on the left-hand side. Plasma filaments lifting on the right. And in an outgoing position, you can see all that plasma activity, a little earth to scale there. And as well, the two C-class solar flares from the two bright regions in front of you right now. Looking at multi-spectrum, CME taking off from the top right-hand corner, and we still have that large plasma tornado in the southern hemisphere. It has moved away from the south pole position, but definitely still active. Look at that. Amazing imagery brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory, put together here with daily events worldwide. Amazing imagery. Looking at another light here and darkened region there, black spot is our coronal hole. And very large in the southern hemisphere of our sun, getting ready for an earth-facing position. Space weather affects our minds and our hearts and as well everything on our planet. Looking at the solar x-ray flux, it remains in B range right now after two C-class solar flares today. Solar proton flux is low. Geomagnetic activity, we are sitting at a KP1. Real-time solar wind, we're sitting at 413 kilometers per second after topping out at 645 kilometers per second yesterday. And that was at the height of the space weather event. Looking at the ISWA space prediction spiral, showing that CME taking off towards Mercury, which is that little orange circle, outgoing position. Schumann resonance for today is a power of 10. After yesterday, it was spiked right up to 52. Heavy resonance yesterday. A little bit more of a healthy power today of 10. Quick look there at the telemetry. Quality of 15, power of 9, amplitude of 10. Now let's have a look at earthquakes here the past 24 hours. We're going to start out here with the largest. It was a 5.6. Middle of the Atlantic Ocean, Georgetown, St. Helena. Lonely Earthquake there, South Sandwich Islands, 5.0. Lonely Earthquake, South America, 4.6. Ecuador, as well, we've got lots of activity. Developing here, Mona Passage, and north of Puerto Rico, San Antonio, the Puerto Rico. Heads up, Caribbean Plate, pretty quiet across the North American Plate right now. And as well, Alaska quieting down for the past 24-hour period. 5.2 earthquake here. Mayako, Japan, 15-kilometer depth. And now let's get to Solwa, Vanuatu, 4.7 and a 4.3. 4.4, deepest earthquake today, 568-kilometer depth. Levuka, Fiji. And yesterday we had a very deep earthquake coming in at 602 kilometers, Fiji region. Lots of activity, Banda Sea up into Indonesia and of course Philippines here, 5.4, Magsaysay, 38 kilometer depth and as well a 4.5, Talisay, Philippines, 4.2 earthquake here in Kempang, Thailand, 4.9, Nepal, 
5.5 King High China, and as well a 4.4 Afghanistan, 99 kilometer depth. Quiet across the African plate and up into Europe. And that is the past 24 hours for earthquakes. A quick browse at the last seven days across the planet. Two largest earthquakes that we've seen were Central America and as well Papua New Guinea. Still expecting something a little bit larger here over the next 48 hours. Heads up west coast. A lot of pressure building and a lot of strange fires erupting all through the Cascades, which is just a little bit suspicious. Show you exactly what I mean. Let's have a look at NASA worldview. This is overlooking the West Coast, Oregon up into Washington and British Columbia. You can see a fire there around Shasta, Mount Shasta, and then watch fires erupt over the next couple days from the 15th onward right around Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, and northward to Mount Baker. What's going on on our west coast? I do believe there is a lot of pressure building. Look at the most recent satellite imagery, and you can see all of that smoke flooding into the British Columbia Rockies, filling up the valleys. Air quality, definitely low. Amazing imagery here, satellite imagery, NASA worldview, showing the Pacific Ocean, two very large low pressure systems in the North Pacific right now, and as well a pretty strong low over Australia. But look at the size of these guys in the North Pacific, one heading up into Eastern Russia and one heading into Alaska, which was forecasted here the last couple days. They saw a 12 foot waves with those strong systems and watch for a big polar push from these systems as they come into the west things are definitely going to be changing quickly across north america quick little browse here around the rest of the world atlantic ocean same thing showing a very large low pressure system off the coast of spain large low pressure system of course over eastern canada and has been spinning for days. Very large upper level low. These systems are getting bigger. Now let's have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center showing the most recent satellite imagery and as well most recent volcanoes getting updated. Looking at ERA in Japan, Reventador in Ecuador, Semeru, Indonesia, Sangue in Ecuador, Fuego in Guatemala, Etna, Italy, Wolf, Ecuador. So that's 52 volcanoes now as Wolf has awakened yet again. Carrying on here amongst all of these flood alerts through the Pacific Disaster Center, trying to find here the most recent volcanoes, looking at Sabancaya in Peru three hours ago, Nevada Steru is Colombia, Swiss and Ajima, Japan, Ibu, Indonesia, Popocatito in Mexico, Merapi, Indonesia, Krakatoa, Indonesia, Sabancaya in Peru, my oh my, 52 volcanoes actively erupting across the planet. Heads up, stay aware and prepared, everybody. That's what this is all about. Daily events worldwide, high surf warnings through Hawaii right now. Convergence line from those large systems north of you. Tropical Depression 25 reported two hours ago. It's going to be taking the same forecast line as Tropical Storm Nisat took heading into parts Vietnam. And look at all those red flood alerts. Every continent experiencing, and that does not surprise me, considering everything that has happened over the past couple of years, especially with 52 volcanoes actively erupting. Now let's have a look at Null School showing upper level winds, top level winds, Polar vortex is setting up across the northern hemisphere and most of eastern Canada right now and upper midwestern United States are experiencing the cold and snow. Watch for things to dramatically change over the next couple weeks. By October, I'm pretty sure we will be right enveloped 
into winter. Looking at the southern hemisphere versus the northern. Watch for that to change as well in the next month. We're going to see that kind of model across the northern hemisphere as the polar vortex sets up for 2022-23 winter. Having a look here at Ventu Sky, a little bit of a weather forecast here. As you can see, snow will be falling, higher elevations, strong winds with that low-pressure system over eastern Canada, central Ontario, Kitchener, and even Brantford may see some flurries tonight. But rain will continue through some regions and snow, as I said, in higher elevations. Lots of moisture here funneling up the Gulf straight into the Atlantic coast. Brought to you by the very large low pressure system, Eastern Canada. And not much is going to change in the coming days. Atmospheric river stretching across the Atlantic. Low pressure system developing on the Canadian border by Saturday. And then Sunday into Monday, you, we will have a major winter storm developing for Montana and most northern United States and as well Manitoba, Ontario. And then here comes the rain for BC and of course Washington and Oregon help douse those fires, help with the air quality. But cold temperatures moving in, overlooking South America and the Atlantic Ocean. No major tropical systems developing just yet. Shows one there developing by Monday, but seems to be disappearing. We'll see where it goes in the next forecast models. But then by the 28th of October, tropical system here developing in the Caribbean. And then heading northward for now with these forecast models. Stay tuned to daily events. We'll keep you updated on where that's going to go. Africa, no major weather systems affecting you. Same with Europe. Not much has changed since your last forecast. Australia, you've still got a large low over eastern parts. Ushering in a lot of rain and stormy conditions especially along the coastlines here in the long range. As that strong low dips down into Tasmania and then over into New Zealand. Going to leave you here looking at the temperatures for the next few days. Brought to you by Ventu Sky. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please don't forget to smack that like button. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily due. Much love, and bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.